Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habati filah I just wanted to clarify something that I posted in social media regarding the statement Hezbiya in the cloak of Salafiyya just to make sure that people are aware of what I was uh, referring to and so when we look at this when we look at the concept of Salafiyya in, in contemporary times and we look at the many different people because it's become a trend and a fashion for some to adhere or associate themselves with the Medhab of the Salaf. That's become more popular than it was in previous times, perhaps in the 90s and other times. This was not as popular for some. And many people had negative experiences in many of the countries around the world with people who may or may not have had a lot of knowledge and definitely did not have the wisdom and definitely did not understand those uh, foundation principles of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah with Itqan. You know, they didn't have the strength that those Ulama Sunnah were teaching them. That Imam al Albani, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Imam bin Baz, Imam bin Uthaymeen, Wagaydahim Kathir. And there's many others besides them. But the ulama have been talking about this, in fact, for centuries. In fact, uh, since the codification of the principles of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, you'll find this in the Qutub of the Salaf. And so, uh, I want to begin by saying first, there's a very important principle we have to look at, and it's going to be very brief. That it is, it's a, a, a sort of fit principle, al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat, which means the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So that's one thing we have to uh, put in our brains and understand when we're going to talk about this quick, uh, in this quick discussion. Is that al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat, that the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So just because someone says they are Salafi or claims Salafiyya does not exclude them from Hezbiyya and from the characteristics of the Hezbis. Sometimes what you find, unfortunately, from some of the biggest screamers of Salafiyya, people say they're Salafi, we are the Salafis, the Salafis say, the Salafis take this position, the people who try to claim that they are the representatives of Salafiyya, of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That often you'll see, and this comes from an African proverb I recall from a, uh, an old friend of mine who was Oromo, and of course I can't say it in Oromo, Oromia, uh, in the language, it's an Ethiopian language, but he said that whenever a person is uh, pointing the finger or screaming or what have you, that they're pointing with that index finger, but three fingers are pointing back at them. So this is what you see, unfortunately, with some of the people. They claim Salafiyya, but yet they, and they claim to attack Hizbiya, but you find more traits of Hizbiya in them than sometimes you find amongst some of the extreme Sufis, or at least Qarib men, at least close to their path. And I'm not exaggerating. We have a lot of years and a lot of experience in this matter and have met thousands of people who adhere, uh, who claim to adhere to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and Salafiyya. So let's, let's get into this now. So what you have, because of the popularity of this term and, and, and the different madaras people have studied in, you'll find sometimes two extremes with regards to this. Two extremes regard, with regards to this of people who claim to be Salafi. You have the Takfiris that say they're following the Salaf, who make Takfir of the Muslim governments, the Takfir of the, uh, the Ulama, called the Ulama Murjia, uh, called the Ulama, uh, you know, uh, Ulama Haid wa Nifas, all kind of, you know, the scholars of for dollars, all kind of strange uh, concepts which we, we know that these attacks existed in the time of the Salaf, that many of the um, uh, Ahl Kalam and others they made takfir of, uh, of Ahl Sunnah and they uh, gave them names and, and claimed that they were mujassima, that they were 
people who made resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a body like his creation. All kind of false claims, but this is not the time nor place to go into that. But it the point is is that Ahla Athar, Ahla Hadith, Ahla Sunnati wal Jama'a, the Salafiyun, the Salaf al Salih, all of these various Al Qab or names come from the book in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and come from the Ijtihadat of Ulama Sunnah. Qadimin wa hadithin. In the past and up to present. So these are Shari based names. And regardless of their names, they face the same kind of attacks from Ahl Bid'ah wa Lahwa. And so getting back to the, the, the what we're talking about here. So some they are just pure takfiris, really. And do not be deluded by that. They may have beautiful beards. They may be Arabs, as some of you need to love Arabs. And we love Arabs. We love all humans. But we don't make, uh, give, you know, that just because he's Arab, he's like this. No, that's not uh, what Kitab al Sunnah uh, uh, shows and, and illustrates for us. Because we're looking at taqwa, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. As the, the defining characteristic. So, uh, again, the Habitafillah, Takfiri, so we have many Takfiris and they're all over. You see them doing Dawah in the YouTube, you see them Dawah and Masajid around the world. We have a lot, we have them in the West, we have them in the East, okay, and they claim Salafiyah. They claim to follow the Minhaj of the Salaf and they make Ta'zim in the Minhaj of the Salaf, except for in the issue of Takfir, except, except for they're deluded and they are, they're a product of their environment of the political climate. So they get into the politics and they are affected by aspects of a Khan Muslim. The second category is usually a category, for example, you have people like Yasser Qadi who who make this use this term and, and others, other non Salafis who uh, use this term Salafi jihadis. And I think the origin, it may come from Arab uh, Arab sources, but it's very common in the West, Western uh, academics in the universities, um, professors and scholars of Islam and so on, and scholars of Salafia, that they use the term as a different category. You also find this in the public policy arena, if you, if you, by the pundits. You, you see it's used by, uh, in the, for example, if you go to rand.org, which is a famous uh, uh, policy think tank. So a lot of the think tanks, almost all the articles, when they, they talk about Salafi jihadis, and then they, they have other categories for Ahl Sunnah, you know, Salafi uh, Elmi, or Salafi this, or Salafi that. But Salafiyah is one. So we say that Salafi jihadis does not exist. Salafis believe in jihad. That is from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Madhab of the Salaf. That's Islam. But however, we are not extreme, and we do not make, uh, we look at it in the scope of the shara, that it is a, in and of itself, it is not a maqsid, it is not the intent. The intent is to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is a means for the Muslim ruler to uh, to expand the maslaha of the Muslimin. Okay? The, the, uh, okay. Right. The third category of, and this is in the extreme poles, and they're not on the same level. So I want us to also remember, we're not saying that the Tikfiris are like this category, for example, or the Salafi Jihadi, as they say, uh, are, are like the, the ones who claim the Salafiya. Okay, the ones who claim Salafiya, but in fact they are Hizbis. In fact, they uh, have the traits of Hizbiya. And the best way we can talk about this category is going to the kalam of Im Imam bin Uthameen, and I'll be as brief as possible. I'm only gonna give you a portion of his speech as a shahid for what we're talking about, because that means he was dealing with this in the, his time. And obviously he dealt with it, because you'll find it in his beautiful books if you get them in Arabic. But Imam bin Uthaymin, he said, Salafiyya is following the way of the Prophet and his Sahaba, for they are our Salaf, our predecessors, who preceded us. So following them is Salafiyya. That's Salafiyya. As for taking Salafi as a special minhaj, such that everyone who differs with it is considered astray, even if he was on the truth, and taking Salafi as a partisan path, as a form of hisbia, then this is beyond doubt opposite to Salafiya. 
opposite to Salafiyah. And this goes back to the Qa'idah we said. Let's get an example. Sometimes you have some mas masajid in the West, because that's what we're more familiar with. And they say, we are the Salafis. We represent the Salafis. Us and our two mas masajid in this locality. Us and our seven ma uh, you know, masajid in these five or six states. We're the only Salafis. We have a network. We are the Salafis. Other du'at, they are mukhal they have mukhalifa, even if they study from the same ulama, even if they have the, adhere to the same principles. So you'll have a group that, as they say, I know people don't like this term, but monopolize Salafi, and this is what uh, Sheikh Tahir, he mentioned this, okay? This is haq. <laughs> it's haq, okay? That they monopolize, they try, they attempt to monopolize Salafiyah, but we're not having it. We're not having it. We're planning the flag of Salafiyah based on Kitab wa Sunnah. It's not, it gets, that's what our, our Imams did. That's what the Imams did. Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Rahmatul Ali, Rahmatul Wasiya said, Da'u ta ahla sunnah, da'u tun min kitabi la ila kitabi la, wa min sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, the da'u of Ahlul Sunnah, it is the da'u from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah, and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I think it's clear. That's the da'u to Ahlul Sunnah. That's the Salafi da'u. So the Salafi da'u is not saying that we are the Salafis. Or, I, I, in fact, I don't hear most of the ulama speaking like this. Most of the ulama, we don't hear them saying that. You know, in their in their lessons, we didn't we didn't witness that. Okay, them saying we are the Salafis. Instead, they spread the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, khalas, and ta'ina, and they didn't call themselves Imam Muqbil was shadid on this fact. If you go to his tapes and you'll find how many times he said, "We don't call to ourselves. We don't call for you to come to Damascus. We call you to the Sunnah, wherever you are. We don't care if you come here to make our numbers great, and we don't want your money. That the man and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows best, but he the ikhlas." We witnessed some beautiful things from that imam, and it's a tarbiyah for us if we, if we, if we, uh, we take that into our, our lives. Taala. So Imam uh, Ben Uthameen he said, all of the Salaf or early generations called for unity and harmony. That's what the Dawah should be calling you to. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fi Kareem, wa tasimu bihablillahi jami'an, wala tafarqu." He said, "Adhere all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide." So the asal is, is we have to have that unity. But, not like a Khwana Muslimin, not like all these groups say, but our unity is based on the book and the sunnah and the madhar of the salaf. That's where we differ with a lot of those jama'at. We want unity. Like they claim they want unity. Of course, they don't want unity with us. They don't want unity with the usul of Ahl sunnah. They don't, they don't, you know, that, that threatens their, their call and their da'wah. And perhaps even their pocketbook. So, the asal is, is that we need to be striving for unity and harmony, not discord and dysfunction. Every time you see your brother make a mistake, you destroy him, you belittle him, you try to, you know, you want to see that da'i uh, destroyed. That's not the da'at to ahl sunnah. Da'at to ahl sunnah is also not something where you, you're, you're, you're using weapons and you're threatening people and you're attacking the honor of people, destroying people. That's not the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. Well, I had never saw any and I never heard any of our Mashaikh Sunnah. And Yemen was a little wilder because Yemen was guns there, not like Saudi. But I never heard any of them. I never saw any of the ulama in a fist fight and, and all these kind of behaviors. Now, it's understandable. They're ulama and but even the Tulab al Alam because there should be a tarbiyah. When you're, you're coming closer to the Sunnah, you should be a tarbiyah. It should be uh, an educative process. Working on your manners, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Ma'min shayin athkal fi meizan a mu'min yom al-qiyam min rasul al-khulq, wa inna Allah yubghidu al-fayish al-bidi." There isn't a thing that weighs heavier in the scale of a believer than good manners, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. Right. So Ben Rathimin said, "All of the Salaf of early generations called for unity and harmony around the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and did not regard as misguided those who differed with them on the basis of their understanding." And interpretation, except when it came to matters of aqidah or beliefs, because they regarded those who differ with them in these matters as misguided. But with regard to practical issues, they were often easygoing. Subhanallah, how many people take people off the sunnah for the lightest of matters? The lightest of matters in ijtihadat, because they don't agree with them. 
because they don't agree with who they sit with because they didn't even know what the intent of so and so was going to such and such masjid calling the people to tell hate but yet they differ with him Khalas, he's, he's, a, he's not from Ahl Sunnah he's a Muqtadi'ah, he's a Hizbi he's Mumayyah, he's this, he's that okay, so we have to be careful of rushing and this is what we see from the Tarbi of a lot of our great Imams like Imam uh, uh, Imam Abdul Rasul al abad you know, because he's trying to give him medicine in his books you know, trying to give you medicine to clear this sickness up of Kathra to Tabdi, of Tabdi Mughayri Haq of making tibdi of people without the right, without the you know conditions, without looking at at any maslaha, without looking at even the reason you're making tibdi of them, because you don't make tibdi of someone just because he differs with you. You know the truth is what you're looking at. Al ibra bi haq, the truth, the 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 important thing is the haq. It's the truth. It's not your group and it's not your, your crew. It's even not your shaykh and not your one, two, three, or four mashaykh. It's not, that, that's not, uh, the haq is not mahsur bihim. It's, it's not restricted to them. And how many ulama have spoken about this too? But you don't want to listen. You don't want to listen. But you, you follow the ulama, I guess. Yeah. So, ahabati fillah. I'm going to end this last statement of Ibn Rathami. He said, but some of those who follow the path of Salafia in modern times started in, to regard as mis misguided everyone who differed with him. This is like a principle of the Khwarij, okay? They made takfir, ba'dum, min ba'd. The takfiris, the Khwarij, the original sect, they used to make takfir of one another just for their differences. It didn't even, might not have anything to do with the deen necessarily, but they differed, khalas, their kuffar, okay? What we see in contemporary times, we have a group of people in, uh, organizations and Dawa movements that claim Salafiyyah, which is a beautiful claim and a beautiful call, call to the book and the Sunnah and the method of the Salaf, but are they really practicing Salafiyyah? Are they really calling you to Salafiyyah when, whenever someone differs with them or someone takes knowledge from a scholar they don't like or their one, two, three Mashaykh don't like or whatever the case is, they take them off the Sunnah so then you're a mukhalifa. You're the one who differs. So you are no longer from Ahl Sunnah. This is their concept. So this is a dangerous practice to rush to make tabdi of people and to try to destroy uh, the unity of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So again, but some of those who follow the path of Salafi in modern times started to regard as misguided everyone who differed from them, even if the person was correct. And some of them adopted a partisan approach, Hezbiyah. Like that of the other parties which claim to belong to the religion of Islam. Allahu Akbar. This is what we've been saying. We've been saying this for years as well, Habitabillah, that again, it, it goes to the reality of something. It's not in a name. Just because you, you, you know, Abu so and so or Philan so and so or brother so and so or uh, Da'i so and so or the elder so and so says that so and so is the Sunnah, you accept it. Even though so and so could be one of the worst of. Uh, sinners and one of the worst people adhering to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's, it's not sufficient that, Abitifillah. What is only considered is their adherence to the truth. And that is what your Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala looks at. Inna Allaha la yandiru lalit sadikum wa la ila surukum wa la kan yandiru lukulubukum wa amalukum. Allah looks to your hearts and your deeds. It's not going to look to how pretty and handsome you are and how, how you outwardly show the sunnah and how you click and kick it with certain individuals that you're in the sunnah. La. It's going to be down to you and your deeds and your heart. A last point, because this is a big issue and we could go on for days about this. The other extreme is that those who what we would say are mumayya in a sense. Meaning that these are people who totally, they claim Salafiyyah. <clears throat> and they totally, they're kind of the opposite. So this group who claims that they are the Salafis, they go to an extreme. And as Imam Fozan defined ghalu, ghalu to jawaz al-had, it means to go beyond the bounds. So they're doing things that is not from Ahl Sunnah. 
So we can't, they're, they're doing things from Hezbiyah. Khalas, let's just be clear. This group, Mumayya, Mumayyun, as they say, this is people, which we see a lot of as well, who claim that they uh, follow the men head to the Salaf, but they throw away many of the important usul of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. They disregard, they can do, they really have a, a, more often than not, they are, tend to be, as in the context of our time, especially in America and places like this, they're very influenced, uh, they're influenced by Akhwan Muslimin. We don't say they're Akhwan Muslimin, but they are very much uh, in line with aspects of their da'wah, with aspects of their menhaj, their method methodological approach to uh, how to practice uh, Islam and even on how to define issues of masalim and mufasid, what are the harms and benefits. So they will say, you know, there's only harms. So there's no such thing anymore of hajr. There's no much such thing as talking about ahl bid'ah. We're not even going to talk about it. In fact, we'll sign letters with ahl bid'ah saying we won't talk about ahl bid'ah. And you know, they'll do these kind of extreme things. These are extreme things as well. They're they're also going beyond the hud. You know, they're going. The sunnah is here, but these mumayyun. They're going down here because they're compromising the religion to such an extent. The other group, they're going, they're they're not they're not trying to compromise, but in fact they're going beyond, with you know to de without without the right to do so. You know, without it's like the tikfiris. They go, they make tikfir without the conditions for tikfir. They just you know, oh, you differ with me, mm, kafir. You you this uh, kafir murtid. This apostate. This one, your blood is law lawful. This is, you know, their mentality, and it's a type of, it's a type of sickness in the religion. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Anything I said that was correct was from my Lord Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala Ali wa Sahbi wa sallam.